بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Okay quickly um, one of the questions that uh, need to be answered is how can I get to know somebody in a halal manner because unfortunately a lot of the youth think that Islam is you don't see the person you want to marry it's just you may you meet on the wedding day and halas you get married and obviously we know that's not the case how could one go about getting to know the opposite gender in a halal manner you know before i answer that let me quickly tell you that my brothers and sisters i'm not encouraging you to just bypass your parents your parents are the most important figures in your homes in your house there is so much of rights they have you must discuss these matters have an open relationship with them but what i am trying to do is those of us who do find ourselves in this type of position predicament i'm asking the parents to be more understanding and to let things happen you know i have children i have ideals for them but trust me and i have proven myself if one of them would come to me and tell me i'm interested in marrying so and so i'm interested in two things deen and akhlaq you have it and you're interested and both parties are interested i am only a facilitator of what allah has instructed me to facilitate that's all what happens happens later please let's open our eyes and continue so regarding the the question of how do i meet in a halal way halal dating and i think we will end with this one right Oh, one more okay no problem no problem we have the vote it's okay we, we're still we're still there you're still the mayor so basically halal way of it's not dating it's actually meeting you see in islam it's actually a sunnah to see your spouse you know you speak to the person you meet them but it must be under supervision so that you're not abused i tell you the main thing is the issue of a chaperone so if you have a girl for example she's seen a brother it can happen and she's interested wallahi the best way of doing it is you get hold of your own brother your father you know i have such a relationship with my children i will do it for my daughter any day and if she's interested in someone i'll go meet him and so on and tell him hey listen you know my daughter's showing an interest for example in you and let's just get to know each other you know what do you think and i can gauge and i can... don't involve your chaperone after you were already aborted once you know what i mean after everything's over you're already in such love that there's no way that you're going to take no for an answer that's a mistake that people make you involve your family far down the line you see so what happens is initially they will look and and they will then introduce you officially i'm here for example and you can be seated there and have a nice chat mashallah coffee a tea i might not be able to listen in to exactly what you guys are saying but mashallah you're you're under the eye there's no kissing no touching no nothing because why there can't be emotions at that stage you're talking you're discussing what are you what do you like what do you not like you see how the person speaks how they look they stand how tall short all these things it's permissible to look at these things okay so if you're satisfied you can uh, let your parents know if both of you are satisfied and you're happy alhamdulillah if not nowadays a lot of the people say i need to meet you again it's not enough so you meet again and you meet again and you meet again every time similar condition there is no restriction as to the amount of meetings some people come to you and say no you must meet once and that's it you know what you bring the tea in and you just say salam alaikum and you walk out and he's seen the tea subhanallah a wise guy will say hang on hang on hang on you brought me milk tea i don't want milk tea i need another cup of tea i need green tea and then she speaks to you and then trust me the tea business was belonging to the 1960s and 70s subhanallah at the moment it's cappuccino guys so you need to know you're allowed to meet you're allowed to talk you're allowed to have a coffee together you're allowed to sit and chat you must know because the last thing you want is for your daughter to marry a guy who's only marrying your daughter because he, he wants to please his parents but he's got something on the side and your daughter is banished wallahi it's happening every day it's happening and they tell you two years later i never wanted to marry you i've already got my girlfriend i've already got three children from her and so on and you're like why didn't you tell me well i did it for my parents the punishment of those parents is severe you destroyed the lives of people so it's best to be honest to say listen we're wasting time i've already got someone my parents are just being funny thank you so much i respect you i salute you shukran i will say no for you thank you so the person will go back and say listen no it shouldn't even get to that you should have an open relationship but the problem with us we're so hypocritical we allow our kids to go everywhere but when it comes to marriage no you can't meet him dad i've met 3000 men in my life the man I want to marry, you don't want me to meet him. What's this? What's the problem? Where are you? What's happening? I've had lecturers who were male. I've had everyone who was, and the man I want to marry, you're not even allowing to me to meet him. 
under supervision. And the next thing, the dad says, okay, under supervision. So he comes and he sits right here, right? What do you want to say? Say it. Take it easy. Take it. They know. They're on a new, the new generation. There is a generation gap. We are not compromising the deen. We are only showing you how it works up to Qiyamah. Don't come and implement your own culture here when it contradicts the deen. If it doesn't contradict the deen, by all means, you're more than welcome. If it does, you're not welcome. May Allah forgive us. So you meet once, you meet twice, you meet three times. And then if you're not happy, respectfully, shukran, thank you so much and so on. Another thing, when you have a chat, can I have your number? Yeah, you can. You know what's the proper way? I would like to suggest. I've seen, I've seen young girls and, and boys as well sometimes being bitten by statements of, uh, you know, emotional value. I love you, I miss you, send me a picture please, send me one without your hijab, send me one this way, that way. And I know of Muslim children who send each other nudes and they come out, they release, they're blackmailed. Watch out, watch out. No matter how deep you think the relationship is, don't do something un-Islamic so that you won't be hurt. However, let's listen to this. So if you want to chat on WhatsApp, no problem. You can chat with me, but guess what? My brother's going to be the, per the third person in the group. He will be dormant and quiet. The guy says, but don't be, don't be so full. Just be realistic. Come on. How? Do you know what? If you're really interested in marrying me, you will agree. What do you have to hide? You're going to be living. These are your in-laws, man. Come. Come on to the chat. It's the three of us. Let's talk. And see, he won't be able to say, oh, wow. I haven't yet seen your legs, man. You know? Because why? Brother is there. It's only done for your protection. Your heart is one of the most valuable organs you know the heart and the mind are the most powerful organs of the body do not allow anyone to control those two because they can hurt you very badly it's allah allah will control allah decides you gave your heart away do you know they have the capacity to break your life and sometimes we do it too soon subhanallah may allah help us I